talking about Luis J. Gomez, I haven't seen his video just yet. I haven't seen the actual video he's responding to. But allegedly, Luis J. Gomez had a complete horror show on Kill Tony. Allegedly, Luis J. Gomez absolutely shit the bed on Kill Tony in Madison Square Garden. So much so that it's become the like the talk of the subreddits and stuff on Skank Fest, on the Skanks Reddit, and sometimes on the Kill Tony Reddit. People have been talking about how badly he did. And I guess on the next episode of rap he decided to cope and try to explain why he did so poorly on that big kill tony stage giving a big shot to kind of impress giving a big shot to do his ting and he completely shit the bed um which i'm not surprised by because lewis j gomez is barely a stand-up comedian barely basically he basically has no right and no place to ever criticize brendan Schaub's comedy he's as bad if not worse than brendan Schaub, and he actually might be worse because he takes stand-up comedy seriously and he actually tries to be funny and write jokes and he goes on tour and he does sets in places and shit and he releases specials consistently like he's actually worse than brendan in that case because he's actually trying so he doesn't have any right or room to take the piss out of brendan but this is Luis J. Gomez talking about his experience on Kill Tony at Madison Square Garden courtesy of the Kill Tony subreddit let's see how he tries to cope um about how poorly he done i can't wait to watch the video itself when it eventually does drop i'll probably do a live stream so if you're gonna watch it wait for me and we'll watch it together i want to watch that whole madison square garden fucking thing when it eventually does get on youtube but this is lucia gomez responding um or clarifying why he did so poorly on kill tony let's see what he's here's what i'll say this is what's fucked up they they told me i was likely going on saturday tony wanted yeah. to keep it all very like who we'll see when we're putting everyone up i was outside smoking weed with big J and uh DeRosa and I get like 10 missed calls from Ari and they're like dude they want you up right now and I'm wearing sweatpants and a fucking dirty hoodie and I'm like by the way by the way by the way by the way I love how he's already trying to gaslight the story by trying to like take the piss out of Tony Hinchcliffe for like keeping the schedule and whatever close to his chest and trying to make it you know a little bit exciting on the day and add a little bit of element of surprise or excitement to how people are, are, are going to be on the show but more than likely, he knew about his appearance on Kill Tony months in advance. Maybe weeks, maybe days. He knew about it. He knew he was going to perform on there. So it wasn't a surprise. Maybe the time is going to go on was a surprise. But the fact that he was going to be on that stage was not a surprise. He knew he was going to perform at some point. So there really is no excuse for not being prepared at all. Because you knew. Yeah. Like, you can't spring the garden on somebody. <laughs> yeah. That's cra crazy. It's psychotic. So yeah. I had no idea what I was even doing. I um, You knew you were doing a Kill Tony show. It shouldn't really matter if it's the garden or if you're performing at a comedy club. You should have something planned to do. Now, it might not hit on the fucking at the garden the same way it hit at the comedy club, but you should have something planned, really, shouldn't you? Literally had to go up the elevator. It was stuck on the top floor for a medical emergency, so I'm like just sweating, being like, ah. Like, fucking... Just die. What is, what's going on up there? I have to go up. So then I had a, I, I went up there without. So I mean, I was legitimately really fucking nervous when I yeah. went up there. Even without the medical. I was nervous. I was nervous. These guys, man, they spent the best part of like two decades telling us they're all like high level stand up comedians, telling us that they're the best, you know. Um, ripping into fans if they dare to try to tell a joke in their direction, saying that we're not worthy of their presence, saying that they are the fucking elite of the elites when it comes to fucking class clowns and court gestures and shit, only to be on a platform that your friend built from scratch. This is not some fucking corporate entity doing this show. This is your friend show in Kill Tony, a colleague of yours, a peer of yours, a brother in arms, and now you're like nervous nervous <laughs> nervous these fucking guys man emergency the elevator was like oh, almost like it makes you want to miss your set at madison square garden it's just for the artist and it's the slowest out it was so slow yeah. yeah it was so slow so we're blaming the elevator now the elevator in madison square garden is too slow the elevator fucked up my set sir <laughs> I didn't do well at Madison Square Garden because the elevator wouldn't go up quick enough. <laughs> oh, um, but it was really cool. And shout out to Tony was and, and the hoop? team. What'd you say? Dang hoop. Dang, a dang was hoop? it a dang it was. hoop? It was. A dang How'd you hoop. feel about it? You felt good about it? I felt good about it, yeah. yeah. I felt, yeah I felt... Of course you felt good about it. Comedians never really are honest or never own up to when they bomb, ever. They never really own up to it. They always felt good about it. I, I can't remember a comedian bombing and all the fans saying they bombed and them agreeing that they bombed. They'd never agree. 
Yeah, I felt good. Yeah, I smashed it. I killed it. I'm the best. It's like the delusion is real. The joke did well. I fucking just got off. I, I wish first and last. What time I should have after MSG. watching Ari the <laughs> next night, Ari, <laughs> Ari came out so big and he so. Came out, it was like a wrestling match when yeah. he came out. And hold on, so you're not aware that Kill Tony kind of lends itself to that with how psychotic and how crazy and how random it is. Maybe coming out with a big entrance and being a little bit bombastic and really playing up to the crowd and their drunken, druggy, euphoric, hedonistic, just overly enthusiastic vibe might actually work. Why is he surprised at it? Haven't you watched Kill Tony? Haven't you been there? Haven't you seen the show grow from like comedy clubs into like arenas? It's always been the case. <laughs> That's the thing that I regret. Not that I would have done what Ori did, but I could have just been more me. I could have yes. been big. <laughs> Honestly, we would kill Brendan. If Brendan was on here coping like this, we'd kill him. We'd be killing Brendan if Brendan was out here copying these type of pleas. And he has all these friends around him saying, yeah, man, it's true. The lift was too slow. Yeah, it's true. The lights were a bit too bright. Yeah, it's true. The stage was a bit too far away from the fucking crowd. Yeah, the roof was really fucking high. That ceiling, fuck, man. I could barely fucking touch it with my fingertips. Like, we would kill Brendan if he was coping like this. This is incredible. This guy talks like he's a fucking, you know, um, Hall of Fame comedian. And here he is complaining. Here he is complaining that his entrance was a bit too meek. <laughs> and I could have busted balls. Like, I, I would have fucked with the table. Had I not been thrown up there like that, I would have had the moment. So he's blaming Kill Tony. Kill Tony threw him up there. To be like, oh, I'm going to go out. I'm going to make like more big. He didn't know he was performing at Kill Tony, by the way. He just, he just goes some random guy waiting to fucking hang out at the store, waiting to watch the show. They just plucked him from the smoking room and say, hey, perform. He had no idea he was performing. Come on, man. Get out of here. Fuck off, mate. You knew. There's big yeah. fucking sparks. I would have yeah. fucking, you know, it was more like I was like, oh, I got out there and I just did a joke and then I, I dipped off. Um, so that's my only regret. I know. I can't wait to see this footage. It's probably terrible. I can't wait to see this footage. Watching Ari too, I was thinking that I'm like, oh, it's kind of it's fun to watch guys like that because they, Ari's so different, and he really does in a weird way motivate you to be like, oh, I should be me. When I watch Ari go that big, what? Ari's different. Motivates you to be you. So what are you when you're on stage then? Somebody else? Who the fuck are you? You're barely good. You're 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 hardly funny being yourself but then you decide to go on stage and be somebody else you're probably horrendous like can you imagine her comedy she's not even that funny like generally being herself can you imagine her trying to beat somebody else on stage what <laughs> big i'm like no, no no i gotta fucking remind myself don't be a fucking a lot of these guys would probably do themselves a lot of justice and probably help themselves if they actually were able to translate their relaxed conversational podcast persona on stage they don't though because a lot of them like even joe rogan i think if joe rogan was a bit more like how he is on the pod especially on savior parks on the stage he'd be a lot funnier but he has this weird sam kinnison hacky type of voice inflection thing that he does and he just has a weird sense of humor when he's on stage if you actually try to like take that podcast humor on stage he'd be way funnier same for luis J. gomez all these guys need that. So I'm not too sure why they have to wait for Ari to remind them. Like, it's like, bruh, just be yourself. Like, you're way funnier on your pods than you're on stage. So maybe just do the podcast persona. Forget the other stage show persona. Can, oh, like, I'm a fucking nervous asshole and just tell yeah. a joke. Like, go big, be me. I should have fucking thrown a drink into the crowd. Yeah. I should have kicked Rogan in the head. It would have been fucking great, dude. <laughs> fucking put Rogan in a guillotine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you probably sucked him off when you saw him on stage. You know? Hi, Rogan, a big fan. Love the new studio. <laughs> That would have been fun, Rogan beating you up at the <laughs> Getting beat up in Madison Square Garden by Joe Rogan, that's you're doing more than any other UFC fighter ever. <laughs> Honestly. I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see this footage. I haven't seen it just yet, but based on how much Luis J. Gomez is coping and how many pleas he's copying, he probably did terrible. Probably did so fucking bad. And the fact that no one's uploaded it, because there's clips you can find on YouTube if you do some certain digging around and searching and search via upload dates and stuff, you can find some clips from the Madison Square Garden event. You can find, you know, Shane Gillis doing his Trump impression. You can find Adam Ray doing his fucking other impression. You can find some bits. You can see Joe Rogan on there. You can kind of find bits and pieces. 
but I haven't found one person who's re-uploaded Luis J. Gomez's set from Kiltonia MSG. So it must have been that bad that even the illegal clippers are like, this is not worth a ban. This is not worth a couple of views. They're just not bothered. They're just leaving it as is. So clearly it was horrendous. It must have been fucking horrendous. So I really can't wait to see that clip when it does eventually drop. I really, 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 really cannot wait to see. Oh, big up. Who's that? Big up Super Jello. Is that the Black Amico? Is that Kerwin Frost? <laughs> he kind of does look like both, isn't it? He kind of does look like a, mi a mix of Kerwin Frost and Zach Amico. He actually does. He actually does. Anyway, I'm not going to talk bad about Zach Amico because I feel like he got me demonetized. So I'm not going to give him any more negative talk. Only love speech of Zach Amico. Wishing him the best. Wishing him prosperity and growth and loads of good comedy specials and Netflix deals and all this type of shit, right? I'm wishing him all the fucking best. Zach Amico is the greatest. He's one of my idols. I look up to him. I love him. He's fucking the greatest. So big up Zach Amico. Big up Zach fucking Amico. Okay? Cool, cool. Um, big up Chris Mack said, Le Maire was cool when I met him. Who's Le Maire? Oh, Le Maire's this guy, right? The black guy. Cool. Okay. Big up Le Maire then. Big up Le Maire. Um, everyone's saying in the stream chat that he's a cool guy. Hopefully he's a cool guy. Because he looks like Zach Amico. I think he's a cool guy. Because anybody who looks like Zach Amico has to be cool, right? Has to be fucking cool. Of course they're cool. You can't be not cool if you look like Zach Amico. So appreciate people for jumping in there and saving that guy. Appreciate you for jumping in and saving that guy.